Let's play some Starfield. Audio check. I am there. My my mic is working. I am live at twitch.tv slash jewelsmith. Just like my YouTube channel is jewelsmith. And all of my videos from my live streams are over there on YouTube. Or if you want to catch me live, go over to Twitch. If you want to find out more about me, check out junkwitch.com. <laughs> got a bunch of links to things that I do when I'm not playing video games or working on my crafting channel. I do have a little crafting channel. Alright, so I have finished the Vanguard quest line and Ryujin and Free Star Rangers and Sista versus Crimson Fleet. I've done several side quests and I've done some of the early quests in the main storyline. I am really not interested in the main storyline. I found it pretty boring and I don't really like Constellation, so I'm ignoring that. And that's fine. You know what? It is possible to play this game without doing the main storyline and I'm having a pretty good time now. I was having a hard time getting into it at first. I mean, a real hard time. Like it took me, <laughs> I think 40 hours, 50 hours or something before I finally started finding some content that I was really enjoying. Uh, the game has its issues, but yeah, I think uh, as soon as I decided I was just going to ignore the main storyline and ignore the Constellation Companions and just go off and do my own thing and, you know, go join the Freestar Collective, go infiltrate the Crimson Fleet, go fly around, work on my spaceship, have some space fights, this and that, you know, now it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. I gotta admit, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. I'm not a hater. I'm not a lover. It's fine. It's a good game for kicking back, relaxing, and, you know, shooting things, looting things. That's what I like to do. So let's take a look here at the quests I have. Several of them are glitched, so we're going to ignore them. I've got this Apex Predator quest. So let's do that. I'm on Gagarin right now because I was curious if it was possible to pick up Jessamine Griffin here at Lizzie's bar instead of in the Supernova bar on the key. Okay. Uh, I blew that up <laughs> because I, I sided with Sis Def and that quest line. So we destroyed the Crimson Fleet's base. And Jessamine was in that base, but apparently she left before it got blown up. And she's here if you want to pick her up. Let's look at our crew. My ship is the Scarab. It was formerly the Kepler R that I got from Walter Stroud. And I have changed it up quite a bit and renamed it. Crew. Yes. I did have Amelia Earhart and I had Danny with me for a while. They're pretty cool. I like them. I've got Ezekiel. He is my favorite follower. And right now, I kind of want to bring Jessamine on board. I like the idea of kind of sort of role playing Firefly, Serenity, having a ragtag crew of misfits. Rosie is just way too sweet. She is a cinnamon roll that just doesn't belong on my crew. I mean, I'm not a bad person. I don't go around hijacking and pirating and that sort of thing. I didn't side with the Crimson Fleet. But I do get into all kinds of trouble. And I just... The same reason I didn't want to keep Omari on my ship. He just seemed way too nice and sweet. And he had a family that cared about him. So I didn't feel comfortable putting him at risk. It's the same reason I don't bring Sam Co with me, because he always brings his daughter, and I don't feel comfortable putting her at risk. So I am going to unassign Rosie. I'm going to tell her to go back. We had a little conversation last time, and she told me her whole backstory. She's trying to get used to being in space because she wants to go do some research at the clinic or something. She's, she's just too sweet, and I'm not going to use her as like an actual follower, so we'll just send her back home. And let's bring Jessamine on board. I did use Danny as a follower for a little bit. And I liked her. I liked her dialogue. She was handy in a fight. She could hold her own. 
And she wasn't obnoxious. I liked her a lot. I liked Amelia too. I used her a little bit as a follower. She was decent. I mean, they're all functional, right? They're all fine. Uh, okay. So, just mean. Let's sign you to the ship. Bring you on board. She's trying to escape some Varun zealots. That's her story. So, maybe we'll have an encounter with some Varun zealots while she's on my ship and I can blow them up and take care of them for her. Would that be too much to hope for in this game? Maybe? <laughs> Everything in this game is functional. It's not necessarily extraordinary or good. It's functional. Even the quest lines. They, they kind of tease things that would be interesting, but then never actually do them. So, I don't know. But we'll see. I hold out hope. <laughs> uh, Alright. I had Lynn around for a while in the beginning. I like her. She's pleasant. Um... Vasco gets in the way a lot, though. He just does not stay out from underfoot on the ship. When I'm trying to move around, he's always in a doorway. So, I like him. I like having a robot, but he gets sent back to the lodge because he won't stay out of my doorways. Okay, well, if we're going to go do Apex Predator, I think I'm going to use Hadrian as a follower. That's her whole reason for being here. Where are you at, Hadrian? Need a hand with something? Just yeah, why don't you follow me for a while? For how grateful I am. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm glad I was able to help. Well, I think it's safe to say you succeeded beyond anyone's wildest dreams. It's been an honor, Captain. Good luck out there. About there? You're out here with me. Good to see you. <laughs> um, I'd like you to follow me Let's for a while. Let's move out. Oh. He's saying something about leaving my service or something, but... Oh, okay. He'll be on the ship, though. He'll be fine. You got the ship when we're gone. He's my co-pilot. Ezekiel is my co-pilot. Any new orders for me? Do you mind if I ask you some personal questions? All right. I'm game. I'd like to know more about your past. What's the most insane creature you've ever seen? How long have you and Percival worked together? Okay, I'd like to know more about your past. I'm all right with that. Will you tell me more about your service during the Colony War? Everyone loves a war story, don't they? Fine, but I'm not going too deep. A lot of things happened back then that I'm not proud of. That's all. Thanks for indulging my curiosity. Uh, okay, now, we're not done yet. Have you ever missed the war? Ooh, that's a heck of a question. What was your greatest victory? It's hard for me to think of anything that happened during the war as a victory. I'm not proud of all the harm my Xeno Warfare unit did. Our battles got me plenty of commendations, but I don't think they were worth it. I ruined a lot more lives than I saved. What was your greatest Battle defeat? Of Nira. I wasn't there, but my soldiers were. We suffered heavy losses. The Red Devils were a family. And losing family is never easy. I still think about the soldiers who never came home. How did it feel to be a Red Devil? Really special. There's no better feeling than finding somewhere to belong. That's what the Red Devils were to me. A family to fight beside. You know, to become a Red Devil, you have to do hard labor in the mines of Mars. When you're down there... The only people you can trust are your fellow miners. That trust made it to the battlefield, too. We had each other's backs every step of the way. I wouldn't trade a single one of them for anything in the universe. Do you ever miss the war? No, I don't. The colony war ruined a lot of lives, including mine. But I do miss my soldiers. It's been a lonely couple of decades. Okay, that's all. Thanks for indulging my curiosity. My pleasure, Captain. It was good to reminisce. I haven't talked about my service in a long time. The way things ended with the UC after the war, I just... Well, it wasn't something I could talk about with a lot of people. 
Okay, what did you do after you were discharged from the UC military? Well, the years after the war were pretty dark for me. The Red Devils were disbanded as part of the armistice. They thought we were too dangerous to exist. Now, I take blame for that. My unit wouldn't have been as lethal as it was without me at the helm. The Red Devils were my purpose. I felt lost without them. I spent a lot of time wandering the galaxy by myself, searching for something new to live for. That must have been extremely difficult. The Red Devils were dangerous. I get why the Free Star Collective insisted on disbanding you. How long were you on your own? Where did you travel to? I'll say, where did you travel? I mostly visited remote places with interesting creatures. I didn't want to be around a lot of people after the war ended. How long were you on your own? Almost 20 years. But it felt longer. How old is she? My goodness. The Red Devils were dangerous. I get why the Free Star Collective insisted on disbanding I you. I agree. The Red Devils did a lot of harm on the battlefield. But they were still my family. I never really got over losing them. I was hoping to find a new purpose out there in the galaxy. But nothing really stuck. Until I got the message about the terror morphs on Tau Ceti. Old habits die hard, you know? Okay, I guess I'll ask you about something else. What's the most insane creature you've ever seen? Mm, that's a tough call. I've seen most of the creatures in the settled systems, and there are plenty of strange ones. One of the most memorable was an insect-like predator I encountered on a remote planet in the Moloch system. It hunted by sucking the oxygen from the atmosphere around it to suffocate its prey. Isn't that fascinating? How could you suck in enough oxygen to suffocate your prey? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, you'd have to suck in all the oxygen on the planet or something, wouldn't you? That doesn't make any sense. Like, to create a vacuum on a planet with a lot of atmosphere. Um, okay, well, whatever. Uh, I hope you'll warn me thoughts? if we ever get to that planet. Sounds like you were lucky to make it out alive. Were you there to capture it? Sounds like, uh, warn me if we ever get to that planet. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'd rather not see them again either. A few lucky shots were all that saved my life the first time. I have a lot of stories that end with me almost becoming something's lunch. Um, if she's seen like every creature in the galaxy, then why do I got to go around scanning everything all the time? If everything's already been seen and scanned and cataloged. Uh, I hope your lucky streak doesn't end during this trip. That doesn't sound like my idea of a good time. Will you tell me about another creature you've encountered? Sure. I have plenty of stories. This one won't make you squirm, I promise. One of my favorite aliens in the settled systems is native to the Archimedes system. It's a massive xylophagic creature with almost impenetrable armor. They look dangerous, but they're actually quite gentle. When I visited their homeworld, I followed a herd of them for days without any problems. Okay, well, I hope your lucky streak doesn't end during this trip. You and me both, Captain. How long have you and Percival worked together? We met when I was 19. The UC assigned him to be the co-head of my Xeno Warfare unit. Our first day working together, he said there was no way a kid could keep up with him in the lab. <laughs> I had him eating his words by the end of my first week. I was close with everyone in the Xeno Bio unit, but Percival and I have a special bond. Even if he is a huge pain in the ass. Okay, I guess that's Let all of your dialogue. Changes. Okay. Uh, what sort of weapons Need and armor help? do you have? Need me to lend a hand? Let's look at your gear. I can steal her outfit. <laughs> That's fine. I don't want it. She's got some laser cartridges. Okay. Until next time. I don't think I'm carrying any spare weapons at the moment. No. That's my usual arsenal. 
So let's see if we can find her something else she might like. Zeke, are you back over here messing with the cargo hold again? We have a lot, a lot, a lot of weapons. Let's sort by value. Sorting by damage doesn't really tell you everything you need to know about a weapon because there's fire rate, magazine size, range, all that stuff. There's there's little extra mods and things. So uh, if I go by value, maybe that's a little more accurate. This is pretty cool. Hitman calibrated Big Bang. Shattered Shock Laredo. Yeah, this is pretty nice. The AA-99. With armor piercing rounds. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take this. Hmm. This is pretty nice. Such a small magazine, though. I miss elegance. I used this pistol quite a bit. I'm going to take it back. These are all kind of like, I don't want to call them grenade launchers, but they do some some big boom booms. And I don't know if I necessarily want that. I mean, if we're fighting large creatures, it might be helpful, but if we happen to be going through a tunnel or something, sometimes it can blow back in my face, so I don't know. I don't know what her default spacesuit is. She should probably wear the Sentinel's Advanced UC Anti Xeno spacesuit. I mean, it's pretty nice for me, too, if we're going up against critters. I think I used it when we were fighting some terror morphs. I'll take it and take a look at it. How's it go? Doing good, Zeke. Doing good. Oh, see, I got Beast Hunters Refined Mercenary Spacesuit. It already has the 15% less damage from alien enemies. It doesn't have Automatic, and it doesn't have Sentinel, but it's got a lot more physical energy and EM resistance. The airborne and the radiation are good on the legendary, but yeah, I'm gonna give the legendary to Hadrian. I just feel like she deserves it. I mean, I think it was a reward for some probably doing the the Vanguard Terramore thing, but I don't really care. There's so many things in this game I've already collected.
All right, Hadrian, where are you? Do you need me somewhere? Need me to take a few things? All right, let's give her this. Let's give her this. Let's give her some of these. All right, so she needs 15 by 25, 50 mi, and 11 millimeter. Um, 11 millimeter, I think I said, didn't I? I got a ton of that. I think it was 50 mi, right? Got a ton of that too. Good thing this ammo doesn't weigh anything. Maybe it will when they add survival mode to the game. You can trust me with your things. I'll keep them safe. All right, so now she's got 15 by 25, 50 mi, and 11 millimeter. Yeah, I think that's what I gave her. Yep. All right. Put that on, Hadrian. Put that on, Hadrian. Is that everything? Well, I gotta get you a boost pack. Excuse me, see. What packs have I got? That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give her that one. Hey, I'll take that for you. All See right. you later. Let's fly where we need to go. On Tierna 2. Where is that going to be? Ooh, way down here. Huh. Level 35. Okay. I think we can handle that. Deserted Relay Station is where we need to go. There's also an industrial outpost and a science outpost. Okay. Yeah, 
has a temporary temperature. Standard O2 atmosphere, I guess that's what that means. Powerful magnetosphere, moderate flora and fauna, and safe water. This could possibly be a habitable planet. I need to scan one of those for, uh, for the list to get that quest off of my quest list. I'm checking here to see what the standards are for a habitable planet. I saved a list. Okay, it has to have an atmosphere with strong O2 levels. Okay, well, the standard count is strong. It needs to have moderate flora and fauna. This does. It needs to have safe water. Yeah, temperate temperature. Then at least a moderate magnetosphere. Okay. I don't know if standard O2 meets the bill, but... Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll try scanning the flora and fauna around here and see what happens. But let's go land and do what we need to do or figure out how to do what we need to do. This is kind of a follow-up quest. I think these are radiant quests, which kind of just means that they're, you know, random. After finishing the Vanguard quest line, we can go around and gather samples from various critters to help the scientists who are trying to eradicate the terror morphs. All right, Hadrian, you're with me. Might be an excellent spot for an outpost. Oh, yeah. See, she said this would be a good spot for an outpost. We are supposed to go in that direction. What else is out here? Oh, I'm hearing some growling. scan this or did I already scan it? Here we go. Got some red dots. Take your time. We don't want to miss anything.
Ooh, there's a big old critter over there. It's busy hunting, I think, so maybe I'll just sneak up. It's not the sample we want, though. Probably a perk for extending the range of my scanner. Is that worth taking? Maybe. Let's take a look. Science. Geology, medicine, research, surveying. Adds an optional zoom to the hand scanner and scan distance is increased to 20 meters. Optional zoom. Yeah, that might be worth taking. This is for your ship scanner. You can detect uncommon inorganic resources on planet and moon surfaces. And more information about ships in space. Hmm. Botany. Yeah, I don't care about getting resources from plants. But this might be worth taking right now. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Adjust zoom. Okay. Now I can scan from a little bit further away. I can scan from 20 meters instead of 10, I guess.
We could get some useful resources off of that. Ionic liquids, huh? Pack cockroach. Oh, I don't like that. There, buddy. I don't know which end is the front end of this thing. I'm going to assume that's the front end. Stay sharp, Captain. Well, so much for trying to sneak up on him. <laughs> it didn't like us harvesting from it. Getting our little sample. Ooh, deserted relay station. Is it really deserted though? Or does it have spacers? I was gonna leave it alone, Hadrian. But okay, I guess you have other ideas. Jeez, lady. That's 
seems useful. Well, it looks like we got all the samples we needed. I guess this place is really deserted because I haven't seen anybody else. No ecliptic, no spacers. Just bugs. I think we're being followed. big bugs. I'm just looking around this facility. Stay on guard. They might be hiding. I think it's gonna come back. Doesn't seem to be a door into this place here, whatever this was. Oh, it's ruined here. I guess this was the door. Can't get inside. We're out here trying to collect tissue samples for this quest for the Terramorph scientists, but I'm also scanning everything. Oh, I guess we already scanned that one. Because this might be a habitable planet. So, you know, let's scan it. I gotta scan a habitable planet. kind of big old facility over there.
Those are some big nasty critters. Look like they could kill me. That's an interesting specimen. Alright, now who's going to be here? Ooh, a hunting coral crab. Level 50. Seem to be glitched and stuck here. Oh, hey there. You came up to get your picture taken too? They look like giant grasshoppers.
Adrian, if you just stay up here and stay out of the way, they won't come after you. Broke my ankles. Abandoned fuel depot. Is it truly abandoned though? Usually these places that say abandoned have ecliptic or spacers. Of explosion. See if there's somebody up here. Nope, nobody here. Is it truly, truly abandoned? The spacers haven't moved in yet? I'm shocked. Scarface, welcome to the chat room. <laughs> I thought you were done with this game. I keep finding more things to do. <laughs> I finally got my ship the way I want it. And I'm finally finished with the Vanguard, finished with Reugen, finished with Sistef and the Crimson Fleet, finished pretty much everything except the main quest line but after you finish the vanguard you know there's these little follow-up missions you can do and so that's what I'm doing I got Hadrian with me and we're collecting cell samples and exploring anybody over there there are. There's three of something over there. Whether it's people or critters, they're mad now. Yeah, it's people. Alright. Do they see me up here? What does it look like? Is it Crimson Fleet? It does kind of look like Crimson Fleet.
go see who's over here. A waste of time. Killed all your friends. It's good to see in the chat room. What you been up to? Oh, harvested organs. And a contraband chest right there. I don't mind dealing in contraband. I'm generally trying to play as a good person, but... I mean... The organs are already harvested. They're not going to do anybody any good if they just go to waste, I guess. <laughs> or stolen artwork, you know. I mean, it's already been stolen. I like to think I'd be getting it back to the person it belongs to. Should be able to auto slot. It's not letting me auto slot. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know, the auto slot stuff didn't seem to be working. I'm pushing Y and it wasn't working, so I must have been doing everything all wrong. Let's start over again. Dark Arrow is doing good. Work and revisiting Green Hell for the new things they added. Been a couple years from when I played last. Green Hell, is that a game? I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. Didn't you used to play Seven Days to Die? Okay, so this is another kind of survival game, but are there zombies in it? That's a survival game, yeah. But no zombies? Like Seven Days to Die is a zombie game. Alright, 
let's see what we can do here. There we go, we got it that time. Stolen artwork and Varun heretic writings. Sure. Adrian doesn't care that I'm grabbing contraband. It seems like only the members of Constellation are the ones that are so judgy. Oh, there's a pirate plunderer right there. Not anymore. I think that's one of the rifles I gave her. I didn't tell her to use it. I just gave her three rifles and the ammo for them and let her pick what she wanted to use, and I guess she likes that one. Need something? What can I take for you, Captain? I'm just curious what you got going on there, Hadrian. Yeah. She, she told herself to use the Assassin's Refined Breach. Okay. Good deal. I'm glad you like it. Talk to you soon. No zombies. You were in a jungle. Native snakes, spiders, and so on in years ago. I did play Seven Days to Die. Yeah. My husband played it an awful lot, too. But I don't think he's played it much recently. They kept making a lot of changes to it. I don't know if he still likes it as much as he did. I, th I think he does, but... I'm going to leave that little shop roll of grenades. Yeah. I'm getting to the point where I have a ton of credits and really no reason to use them. I'm, I'm happy with the ship that I have. I don't have a lot of stuff I need to buy. Maybe I'll go buy a house in Neon. I'm not sure how to get the house in Neon. There's just all kinds of goodies spread all over the place here. Oh dang, yeah, look at this. Yeah, I don't use a lot of mines. Oh, hi there, Mr. Robot. He's not activated. Oh, advanced lock door. Maybe if we unlock it, we'll be able to use a terminal to activate the robot. Not that I need his help, but... Getting some lag. Don't crash on me, game. Maybe we should do a save. I don't think I've done a hard save in a while, and the game's very laggy here for some reason. Hey, Beyond Belief! Welcome to the chat room! Becker, I was asking, so how does Starfield stack up to playing Fallout 4 in your thoughts? 
Um, I don't enjoy it as much, personally. But I have found things in it to enjoy. Like, doing stuff like this reminds me a lot of Fallout 4. Like, running around and finding these random locations that are full of enemies and, you know, you're running in, you're shooting and looting, right? And you can build settlements. Now, I have not actually built any settlements in the game yet. But you can. And uh, I don't know how that compares to the Fallout 4 settlement building. Because I haven't done it. Right? But it's... Like... It seems like it should be very similar gameplay loop, right? You have food you can eat to restore health and to get certain little buffs. You have tons of different weapons you can use to do things. You have followers. You can build settlements. Um, you know, it, it, it's very similar, I guess. But it just... <laughs> I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts about this game and I've said a lot about this game during my streams of it. Uh, I do not find the main quest line to be very good, and that's kind of typical of Bethesda games anyway, like, even Skyrim, even Fallout 3, even Fallout 4, you know, the main quest lines weren't the greatest in storytelling. Uh, in Fallout 3, I pretty much ignored the main quest line completely until I got around to doing it only because I wanted to get Falk as a follower. Um... Skyrim, you know, I did the main quest line in my first playthrough, but then after that I completely ignored it for like my second and third playthrough. Um, so yeah, what I ended up doing is completely ignoring the main storyline and just going and doing other quest lines. And I've, and I've enjoyed that. Like when I stopped trying to force myself to do the main storyline, I started to enjoy the game more. Yeah, a lot of people have complained that it... Um, it doesn't have the kind of exploration that other Bethesda games have. Like, you can't just pick a direction and go in that direction and find cool stuff to do. That's that's true and not true. <laughs> um, like, you can't... You, you can pick a planet and land on it, and there will be points of interest. Like this. This is just a random point of interest. Uh, and those points of interest will be reused. Like, if you find an abandoned research center on one planet, it's going to be the same exact identical abandoned research center on another planet. They're copy-pasted down to, like, the notes and the terminal entries and everything. Um, and some people have complained about that. But what I do is I just, if I see a point of interest that I've already visited before, a type of, you know, if I find an abandoned research facility and I've already seen that before, I just won't go to it. I just won't go there. Like, I've never seen this particular type of facility before, so I'm exploring it. Uh, whatever it is. Where are we? It's an abandoned... Deserted relay station. Ooh, so, you know. So I'm doing it, and it's fine. Um, but what you can do for random exploration is you can randomly fly around to different stars. Like, I've never been to this one before. I've never been to this one before. And you can just go there... Uh, and, and sometimes there's random encounters. Sometimes people will... Like, I randomly went to Altair and got a distress signal saying, Hey, come help us. And there was this little mini quest line where I met characters. I helped out people. I flew out into space and shot up some spacers. Had a space battle, you know. It was cool. It was fun. Um, so, like, that kind of stuff. I really enjoy the space battles. And I enjoy the spaceship building. Some people don't. Some people, that's their least favorite thing. I enjoy it. I really like my ship. Scarab. That's what I named it. I think the shipbuilding stuff is a lot of fun. It takes a little while to kind of wrap your brain around it and figure out how it all works. I had a lot of help from my viewers in the chat room. Thank you very much to everyone who has piped up and given me tips and stuff. So, you know, it's... It's a strangely complex game that uh, kind of it frustrated me a lot in the beginning because I just didn't know what I didn't know. 
and that's true of a lot of Bethesda games. Like you end up having to read the wiki to figure out a lot of things or read articles or watch YouTube videos or whatever. And I kind of wish I didn't have to do that. I get tired of having to do that. I don't want to tap out of a game and have to go figure out a game somewhere, you know, figure out some part of the game somewhere else and then come back to it. That annoys me. But w once I figured everything out, I, mean, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it now as to how things work and, and what's fun and what's not fun and all of that. So, but, you know, like for me, the biggest draw of Fallout 4 is the characters, the followers, the, the role playing, the story, just the story of the world, not necessarily the main storyline, but just the story of the world that you're in and the people you run into. And I don't think... Starfield overall does not have the same quality of writing and level design, I think, as Fallout 4 or Fallout 3 or Skyrim. Uh, it's very generic. It, it gets the job done, but it's not great, in my opinion, compared to Fallout 4, Fallout 3, Skyrim. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that they went with this like NASA punk realism thing. There's not a lot of really sci-fi stuff in this sci-fi game. I mean, it's futuristic and it's kind of an extrapolation of like, you know, what would happen if people went to the stars kind of thing. Earth has been destroyed and we have to figure out how to live on other planets and stuff. But it's just, I don't know. There's so many things where it's like, I feel like it um, teases you, but never satisfies you. Like there's, for example, one of many examples, there's a quest called Heart of Mars that uh, was kind of played up like, oh, there's this mysterious thing called the Heart of Mars and many explorers have gone to search for it and no one has come back and ooh, right? So I'm like, cool, I'm gonna go find the Heart of Mars. And then I get there and it's just a cave with a rock in it. It's just it's just like a hunk of aluminum or whatever it is, iron or something. And I couldn't even mine it because it's glitched. And apparently that's a common glitch that people get. So I'm like, it was built up and then just kind of nothing, right? And there's a lot of that in this game. Like there's a lot of stuff where, like I could see where they could have had really cool ideas and really cool quests, but like they don't ever actually really flesh it out or get there I mean there's some fun stuff I enjoyed the Crimson Fleet versus Sist of quest line and I enjoyed the Vanguard quest line and I enjoyed the Freestar Ranger quest line I mean they, they, they were enjoyable but there's just also a lot of like unrealized potential and a lot of lack of creativity a lot of places where I think they could have been more creative and they weren't there's a very stunning array of different weapons, and the weapons are really cool. The weapon systems and stuff, they, they feel interesting to use. They have lots of different qualities to them. I love the, uh, the, the boost packs. <laughs> um, being able to boost around, which is kind of like, you know, you could add a jet pack to your armor in Fallout 4, right? Your power armor. It's like having a jetpack in Fallout 4, and it's fun, especially when you get on a planet with low gravity, and you can make really huge jumps and jump up onto the roof and stuff, and it's, you know, jump all around while you're fighting and everything. That's really fun. I wish they had leaned more into it, though. There was one quest that I did, and only one, where I went on a spaceship and they were having a problem with their gravity generator and it kept shutting on and off. So like while I was trying to fight all these different enemies, sometimes we would just suddenly lose gravity and be floating around and trying to fight each other that way with in zero G, right? And then all of a sudden the gravity would turn back on and boom, you, you know, go back to the ground again. That was really cool. Like that really played with the mechanics of the game and it was really fun, but they only did it in that one quest. Um, yeah, so eh, it's a mixed bag. It's very uneven. Some of the quests are fun. Some of the dialogue is good. Some of the writing is good. Some of it's awful. Um, yeah, so anyway. 
I could go on. I could go on and on, but I don't know. Does that answer your question? I wanted to like it as much as Fallout, but it just it hasn't happened for me. And same for my husband. He's really a space game guy. Like, he loves space engineers and the Star Trek stuff and you know he, he loves NASA stuff he's really into real life NASA things and you know he was so excited for this game and he's played it all the way through and he was kind of disappointed with it I mean he enjoyed it well enough just like I am it's like it's fine it's fine. It's enjoyable enough. But yeah, overall he was kind of disappointed with it too. Let's see if my explosions will bring all the boys to the yard. Usually that'll get the attention of any other enemies and you'll see little red dots show up on your dial to let you know there's more people, but nope. It seems like we got everybody. Oh, nope, there was one red dot over there. I saw it for a second. Because for me, a lot of the appeal of Fallout 4 was the idea of rebuilding the wasteland, rebuilding the Minutemen, um, Hancock, right? Awesome followers. Oh, there's a bunch of dudes over there. those two there what do you think of that Looks like we got an audio glitch. Damn, they're gone. Well, I can move back out. There we go. Back. Over here. And there's a lot of glitches. There's a lot of glitched quests.
Really? You don't hear your friends getting shot out here? Hey, green over there. Okay. Need some help here. Get the best you got. So we got a red dot over there somewhere. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's a pirate plunderer right there. I guess she got him. Finally. Sometimes you can blow up some of the tanks and things. You sound like you're glitched, Adrian. Oh, it's getting laggy. Very laggy right here. Weird. I'm better. Oh, there's my ship. Let me do a save just in case it decides to crash. Dark Arrow's saying I got bored of seven days to die. Oh, yeah? Nope, oh, thank you for your thoughts. Was maybe thinking of getting the game myself, but not sure about it. So more of an exploring game, kind of lacking a story. Yeah, Beyond Belief says I'm pushing 2,500 hours and I'm loving it. Yeah, it, 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 Dark Arrow's known me a long time, and so he's asking for my opinion. He knows how I play games. He knows what I've played. Um, but yeah, I mean, for every person that says this game is boring to them and they don't like it. You know, there are people who like it. I'm in over my head. Well, you better get out of here then. Yeah, these are pirates. Huh, interesting. 
but uh, yeah, for me, having played Skyrim and Fallout and stuff, people like games for different reasons, right? I mean, that's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, if you're looking for fantastic writing and a great story and lots of companions and stuff like that, this game's probably not it. Um... Nope, there we go. Activated the robot. Yeah, see, you can activate the robots just like in Fallout. Just like the Protectrons in Fallout. Um. Right, everybody's different, and we all like what we like and don't like. <laughs> You're right, Dark Arrow saying that. Right, exactly. Now, the thing is, though, is it seems like, to me, like, Starfield has not been as well received as other Bethesda games. People who play a lot of Bethesda games and who expect certain things from a Bethesda game played Starfield and got really disappointed, right? I think people who... I don't know. It seems to me like... Um, the people I know who like Starfield are also people who... Oh. Okay. Are also people who liked Fallout 76. Or people who have never played Bethesda games before. Not always. Not always. But, you know, because people play games for different reasons. So, you know... But I think a lot of the people who didn't like Starfield, they just had certain expectations that weren't met. Like me. I, I, I don't want to say I don't like Starfield. There are things I like about it. And I have found some fun things in it. Like I said, I'm really a, a weird case because there's like people who love Starfield. And then there are people who seem to hate Starfield, like just, you know, absolutely can't get into it, are bored to tears, can't find anything to like about it, right? I've, I've met a lot of those people. But I am, like, strangely in the middle. <laughs> I don't hate it. I don't love it. Like I said, I've found things in it to enjoy. There's a lot of things I don't enjoy. A lot of things I would think could have been better. It feels to me, just from what I know about software development and game development and whatever, it feels to me like it suffered from being developed during the pandemic. Like, maybe a lot of people were working from home and they didn't have enough meetings to really, like, oversee what people were doing and make sure everything meshed together. Like, the people who were working on the guns and the the, uh, the shipbuilding and stuff, they knocked it out of the park. I mean, that's definitely an admirable part of this game. But, like, the overall storyline and some of the character writing... I mean, there's some downright cringy writing in this. And that's disappointing because, you know, in Fallout 4, I, I did the romance quest line stuff with Dance. I did the romance stuff with McCready. I did the romance stuff with Hancock. I did all of the other characters' side quests and ran around with all of the characters. And I don't remember any of them at any point having, like, really cringy, bad dialogue. But this game has got more than its fair share of just what the actual fuck kind of dialogue in it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know. 
And, you know, maybe some people don't mind. Like, they can just overlook that. They don't care. I'm not going to eat the harvested organs. Yeah, let's not eat that. Um, but I have a hard time because that's one of my favorite things about playing games is the role playing, the dialogue, the writing, the story, the characters, the world building, all that kind of stuff, you know? There we go. I think I got my health back up just by eating a bunch of lunch. Yeah, Dark Arrow saying it was pretty damn hyped up. Back before they made it. The things get dumbed down, cheapened. For whatever reasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what it feels like. It feels like there were just some things that they spent a lot of time on that are really well done. And then other things where it's like, what were they even thinking? Why is this in here? This makes no sense, you know. And here's something for nothing that I learned by doing a little bit of research online. But I looked up the credits for this game, the credits for Skyrim and for Fallout 4. Uh, and I compared, not every single person that worked on the game, but I compared a lot of the, the writers and the level designers and stuff. And I think it looked like about half of the people who had worked on Skyrim and Fallout 4 were no longer working at Bethesda when they started doing Starfield. Now, I don't know if that's a result of them doing Starfield and the people just didn't want to work on Starfield, so they wanted to go off and do their own thing, or they didn't like the direction Starfield was going in. I, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I have no idea why people left. But there are a lot of people who were working on Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Skyrim, who did not work on Starfield. They left the company for whatever reasons. So that may be why the game feels kind of uneven. Like, some parts of it are really good, and some parts of it are, are not. Uh, it's just because they had different people working on it. Um, I, I definitely, though, blame the, uh, the pandemic. I think it just feels like a game that needed more oversight and, and needed some narrative direction. I don't need that. I'll take that. It feels like they were trying to do a lot of different things, but, like, didn't necessarily accomplish all of them very well. Like, they're trying to be... There's a lot of things in this game that remind me of No Man's Sky. There's a lot of things that remind me of Outer Worlds. There's things that remind me of Fallout and stuff. And, like... <laughs> and there is a direct ripoff of Skyrim in the main story. I mean, the, I don't know if you know... Nightwear. I'm gonna take the nightwear. I'm not sure what that is. Adhesive. Yeah, I'll need that. We usually need adhesive. I don't know if you know the main storyline. Of this game. Oh, sentient AI adapters. More contraband. Alright, we're gonna be selling a bunch of contraband. I don't necessarily want to spoil it for you, but I will just say that they did not come up with anything original for the storyline, the main storyline. And I found it really, really cheesy and disappointing. Um, let me look at my inventory. What is the night? Oh, it's just like Long John's. Okay. Alright, that's cute. Whatever. Yeah, COVID <laughs> effed up so many things. Dark Arrow's saying. Yeah. 
I mean, for being, like you said, a hyped up game that was, you know, what are they, they were, they were constantly saying 25 years in the making and the first game that, you know, the first original property we've made in 20 years or whatever, you know, and they were really hyping it up. And for being as hyped up as it is, here's the problem. I'm going to tell you something for nothing. Here's what I think is the main problem with Starfield. Right? And of course, everyone can agree to disagree. But here's my take. Right? Here's my hot take. I think that they did a shit job of engaging the player and putting their best content forward. Now, that said, there are some people who have played it, who have loved it. Maybe they were lucky enough to luck into the good content from the beginning. Maybe they had never played a Bethesda game before and just didn't care. They weren't trying to play it the way that everyone has played Fallout and Skyrim in the past. Or, you know, whatever the circumstances may be. But I think if you look at the majority of people who are playing this game, and I've said this a million times, but <laughs> I'll say it for you now, Dark Arrow. Um, Bethesda released some statistics where they said, hey, we've had 13 million people play Starfield since it came out. And the average length of playtime was 40 hours. Which sounds great until you realize this is a Bethesda game and there's actually like 200 hours worth of content or more, right? <laughs> like Beyond Belief saying, playing 2,500 hours of content. There's a lot of content in this game. Right? You've, I've played thousands of hours of Fallout, right? There's a, Bethesda games have a lot of content. So if you're sitting there going that the average player is playing for 40 hours, they're barely getting into the game at all. Right? So what that's telling me is half the people playing it, or more, um, they're playing for 40, 50 hours or less and just not getting engaged, not getting hooked, not caring, not finding anything of interest, they're being bored, they're being disappointed, they're finding too many glitches, whatever it is, and then they stop playing, right? And that's unfortunate, because like, once I pushed past all of that, like I said, once I put aside the main storyline, once I got into the shipbuilding and the weapons and the, uh, the side quests and everything, the factions and all that, it became fun. It was actually, there's good content in here, but like they fail to put it forward. They fail to, like the Vanguard. The only reason I did the Vanguard quest line is because my husband kept bugging me to do it. But in reality, it really should be the first quest that you do. And I've talked to a lot of people who have said, yeah, you know, I always tell my friends, if you play Starfield, do the Vanguard quest line first. It gives you the lore, the backstory, it sets up all the factions, it sets up the world, it gives you good gear. It, it, it's, it's a great quest line for the beginning of the game, but they do nothing to lure you into it. Like you get a little pop-up on your quest list that says, hey, go talk to this person, right? And that's it. Like there's nothing else that really motivates you to go join the Vanguard, right? They don't kind of funnel you or try to, you know, gently herd you into this quest line that really should be the main quest line of the game and the first quest that you do in the game and everything. So I think that's where they fell down, honestly. It's, it's just... I mean, it's like writing a really great novel, but the first three or four chapters are slow and boring and suck. Like, a lot of people are going to give up on it. Some people will stick with it. Some people will like it because that's the way it is in the world. But a lot of people are going to go, oh, man, this is so boring. I don't like the characters. I don't get it. This is dumb. It's, it's you know, whatever. I, I keep running into to sentences that are unfinished. Lots of typos. <laughs> I'm not going to keep reading this. Screw it. You know. You, you gotta, like, put your good content forward, and they really didn't, in my opinion. I think that's where they f failed at this. Failed to engage people. <laughs> Dark Arrow saying, God, so many hours in Fallout 4 for you and me. Loved it. Such a fun game for me. One of my faves of all time. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, you know, I've done thousands of hours of Fallout live streams on my YouTube channel and Fallout videos. Fallout 3, Fallout 4, yeah, and tons of Skyrim, 
Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of this game, Starfield, is like rehashed. It's rehashed stuff they already did in Skyrim. It's rehashed stuff they already did in Fallout. It's rehashed and reskinned. And then the new content, such as it is, is just not that great. A lot of it. Now, if you love No Man's Sky, and you love the idea of just hopping in a spaceship and flying around to a ton of different moons and planets and stars, and uh, scanning and collecting resources, units received. <laughs> um, God, I heard that phrase a million times when my husband played No Man's Sky. Units received. And you just like the idea of like seeing lots of flora and fauna and stuff. It's fun for that, too. It's all right. Though it does get a little repetitive. I've noticed a lot of the same critters and plants and things on multiple worlds. Um, but, you know, it's still, it's got that going for it. And if you're really into the outpost building and the mining and stuff like that, it's got that going for it. Like I said, I haven't actually built an outpost yet, so I don't know how it compares to Fallout. But I've heard it's really fun. So, I mean, it's got some good stuff in it. It just, it does such a shit job of, like, getting you to care and getting you engaged in it. I mean, some people will come in with their own motivation and, and be easily engaged. But I think that the majority of people, the reason why Starfield's kind of failed is because they've just failed to engage. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think that Fallout 4 is where a lot of people found me. Right, back on YouTube. I used to do Fallout Fridays. And I did a lot of building videos. And I did all the DLC and I did a whole couple of a whole playthrough. We have done so much with Fallout, I know. <laughs> That's how a lot of people found me. I'll tell you something else for nothing. Starfield is my most disliked game on my channel. I already looted all this. On YouTube, I've gotten more dislikes on my Starfield videos than any other game I've played in like the past six or seven years or however long it's been. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are just getting to me. Beyond Belief says, did Fallout 4 at launch come out perfect? I'm asking only because I played Fallout 4 for 10 minutes and deleted it. Um, I wouldn't say it came out perfect, but I think it came out pretty good, yeah, from the get-go. Now, I didn't play it right at launch. My daughter wanted to play it first, and she didn't want to get any spoilers, so I let her play it for a few months and before I picked it up and started playing it. But, yeah, I don't remember having a lot of glitches. I don't remember having a lot of broken quests. Um, I remember being pretty into it. Right off the bat, I thought it was very engaging. I thought it had a really good story. It wasn't perfect. The main storyline definitely, as with most Bethesda games, was pretty weak. And there were, you know, always people that complain about whatever in the game. I mean, that's... You know, it didn't come out to 100% acceptance and fanfare, but I think it was definitely better received than Starfield. I mean, there were people that complained that Fallout 4 was very derivative of Fallout 3. 
And I had not played Fallout 3 at the time, so I didn't know. But later, when I went back and played Fallout 3, they were right. Um, Fallout 3... A, a lot of stuff in Fallout 4 was taken directly from Fallout 3 or just rehashed from Fallout 3. So, yeah, I mean, Bethesda has done that before. But the thing is, is I think part of it also is, like, expectation. Like, if you're going to hype something and say, oh, this is a game that's 25 years in the making, and... Oh, this is the game we want to make, and this is the game we're making because, you know, we don't want to make Skyrim, we want to make this. We don't want to make, or I'm sorry, Elder Scrolls 6, right? We don't want to make Elder Scrolls 6, we want to make this. If you're going to say that, then this, then what you deliver better be damn good. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people are ticked off is because it's not so much that Bethesda is doing anything differently than they've done before as far as having a game with glitches, having a game with a shitty main storyline, having a game that's derivative. Like, they've done all of that before, but it's just the fact that they build it up and make it out to be like, oh, this is the game we made instead of making Elder Scrolls VI. This is the game we wanted to make. This is the game that spent we spent 25 years, you know, in the making, blah, blah, blah. They hype that stuff up, and then people expect a little more? to venture out here and try to scan some more critters. Where are we at with this? I gotta find flora and fauna and I found all the resources and there's some question marks. Question marks may be answered at some of these. natural sites around here. Welcome to the chat room. How you doing? <laughs> Dark Air used to mod the crap out of Fallout 4. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And that was the other thing about Starfield was that... You know, Bethesda games, people like to mod them up, and some of the usual modders, I guess, who had done a lot of modding for Fallout and Skyrim and stuff, said they weren't going to bother modding Starfield because it was crap. 
but I think there's been lots and lots of people modding it anyway. I mean, I've heard about all kinds of mods for it, so... You know, there's still people modding it. There's that little critter. Anything interesting out there? There we go. We don't have to try to scan that thing anymore. We'll go over here and see if we can find something interesting. But yeah, I mean, some people have complained that the space vistas are very empty and boring. Like when you fast travel to a location, instead of being set down next to that location, you have to run a mile to get there <laughs> through some boring rocky landscape. But I kind of like it. Like I kind of like the wide open spaces. And the different planetscapes because you know every planet or moon I've been to has been different and that's been interesting you know just the way that the planets look uh, the way the gravity is on different planets some is heavy some is you know earth type gravity some is very low gravity you know I found all of that interesting It makes for some very pretty pictures and postcards, <laughs> postcard images and stuff. But I can totally understand how some people would find that extremely boring. You know. So I get it. You know, some people, including myself too, you know, prefer story, character role-playing and yeah I'll tell you there are only four people in the game that you can romance or have a relationship friendship with there's the four characters and the four of them are all from the same faction so if you end up like me where you don't like constellation and I don't Constellation is the main story, main faction. If you don't like them, then you're just out of luck. You're not going to have any friends or romantic partners or anything in the game. Um, because that's all you get. Or like if you want to be a pirate. Like maybe you don't want to be a good person. See, all... All the constellation members are lawful good, more or less. Uh, so if you're not good, like if you're gonna steal or hijack ships or whatever, they're not gonna like you. And even if, you know, I'm trying to be good. I'm not trying to be evil. I'm not murdering innocent people or anything like that. But even when I do all the quests, which I do on my own, not with any of the Constellation members, but every time I do a quest line, they want to talk to me about it as if they were there and they weren't. And they get mad at me. They don't like the choices that I make in these quest lines and they ream me over it. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care what your opinion is. I don't, don't want to know. You can fuck right off. So. It's kind of a bummer because, like, there's not, you know, like in other, like, Fallout games, Bethesda games, Skyrim and stuff, you had a choice of companions. You could have a companion who was maybe lawful and good, like Vilkis, or you could have a companion that didn't care what you did, like, uh, you know, any of the mercenaries in the game. Unexplored geological feature. Why are you shoot? Why are you attacking me, my dude? I 
guess I got too close and he didn't like me getting into his business. But yeah, look, you know, pretty sunrise. <laughs> sunrise on a very pretty planet. This one is probably a habitable planet. That's one of the things I'm trying to figure out. I seem to have lost Hadrian somewhere. Unexplored geological feature? Well, I'm trying to explore it. Oh, here we go. Dense roots, fibers, and other biotic structures. Hive structures. One of three scanned. Okay. Anyway, there's just not a lot of different followers or friends that you can have in the game or romantic interest or whatever. Like there is in other Bethesda games. Maybe they'll add some with the DLC, but... Three scanned, okay. All right, so where's the third one? Julie's saying, how'd they find out? They were not there. Very judgy, most of them. I know, that's what I've been saying. Every time I go and finish a quest line and they're like, we want to talk to you about what happened at Ryujin. I'm like, why? You weren't there? It wasn't in the news. It was a stealth mission. <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> and there was even, oh, there was something. I think it was uh, the Vanguard stuff. I went back and was talking to Sam Coe and he was like talking about we did blah 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 and this thing that happened when we or we were doing something or other and I'm like what do you mean we we you weren't there you weren't with me on the vanguard quest line it was so weird yeah and they're all very judgy they don't like anything that I've done I'm like what why do I care what they think of me you know I mean, maybe if I cared about them as a faction or I cared about the main quest line or whatever, it would matter, but... Hang on one second. Your dad has it. I think I told you that your dad had it. Okay. My daughter. She's has, she just got home and she was asking me where something was. <gasps> but yeah, in, in Fallout 4 at least you had a variety of different people. Like, um, whoa, somebody's dead here. Survivalist. Oh no, survivalist, you didn't make it. You did not survive. You failed at your one mission. <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> and you failed at it. Ooh, that's 
this thing. Oh, it's not that. Okay, I've scanned this one. I've scanned one over there. It says there's three hive structures, but I'm not sure where to find the third one. Maybe over here. Past the dead survivalist. But yeah, in other games there were like, you know, good neutral and evil followers that you could have. There were neutral followers that didn't care what you did one way or the other. There were good followers that only wanted you to do good. There were bad followers that, you know, wanted you to do crime and murder and whatnot. There we go. I hope that thing's well calibrated. But in this game, nope. You just get the four constellation people and they're all basically very judgy and good. Lawful good. They got a roar. So let's take a look here at the planet scans. It says I've surveyed 78% of Tirna 2. I've found all the seven resources. I haven't found one of the traits. Now there's probably different biomes. Let's take a look. Yes, there's a sandy desert biome. I am currently, am I in the sandy desert biome? No, I might be in the mountains. 60% it says. Sandy desert, 40%. Volcanic, 40%. Okay. So to scan the whole planet, I got to go to these different biomes until they all say 100%. So let's go ahead and head back to the ship. No, I want to go back to my ship. <laughs> hey, Dave. I picked Dave something T? up for you. Or, or are you are you Davit or Dave T? says, I'm Maroon Constellation members on a rock with only a single hab room. <laughs> yeah. I like that. They are not my favorite people. I don't mind Barrett. Like, he's alright. He doesn't seem to mind me either because I got his friendship up pretty fast. And I was able to do his side quest. And Andresia was okay. My husband married her in his playthrough and I've done her side quest but like as soon as I was done with her side quest I got rid of her kicked her <laughs> back to constellation Ugh. All right, I've got all these uh, contraband things weighing me down. We gotta go to the den and get rid of those. Okay, <laughs> Dave, Dave T or Davit says either one works for me. Beyond beliefs is there are plenty of evil companions in Starfield. Uh, there's plenty of companions in Starfield. But most of them are pretty generic. And you can't romance them. You can't have friendships with them. I mean, you can assume Looking you have a friendship today, with them. Thanks, Jessamine. Um, 
But no, you can only romance the four constellation people. And they're the only ones with side quests. They're the only ones that are well developed. If you want to marry somebody in the Crimson Fleet or something, you can't do that. Yeah, I mean, you can join the Crimson Fleet, and there's a few followers you can get through the Crimson Fleet. And there's a few dodgy companions. I mean, I've had a few on my ship, like Jess and like Danny and stuff. But, you know, you don't develop a friendship with them. You don't develop romances with them. They don't have side quests. If you want to romance them, you got to do it in your own mind. Yeah, Dave's saying the only one in Constellation worth a damn is Vasco. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Even he... I had him on my ship for a while, but he kept standing in the doorways. I guess you gotta, like, make some kind of special space for him to be in, but, God, he wouldn't get out of my way. He was constantly blocking... blocking doorways so that I couldn't get through. All right, we need to scan some more of these things. done. I need to get a few more of these herder things. Let's go over here. Have we done that one? Yeah, we got that one already. Alright, there's a couple. Oh, that one's high level. Back, dudes. Where'd you go. I lost him. How do you lose a ginormous critter like that? I think I've finished scanning the big bad ones, the hunt big huge hunter ones. That guy there. Yeah, that's 100% scanned. Oh, prognosis improved. Contusions. Oh, right, I got a contusion. Oh, they're fighting each other. That's pretty cool. I've never seen something like that before. Yeah, you have. We've seen it a whole bunch of times. <laughs> Since we've been here, I've seen it. Alright, I need to scan one more of those 
critters. And then I think I'll be done. Not that one. That one. Yeah, 100%. Let's hide in the red grass like we're Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn. Alright, um... Okay, so... Mountains, 70%. Sandy Desert, 50%. Does this planet have an ocean biome? It doesn't say there's anything we need to scan in the ocean. I thought it had a third biome. Besides mountains and sandy desert. Volcanic. Yeah, let's go there and see what happens. Up. Oh. Julie saying Vasco was so bugged for me. Yeah. He was alright for me, other than just like every time he was on my ship, he would block the doorways, and then I couldn't get back and forth from the cockpit to other parts of the ship. That was annoying. Everybody here is kung fu fighting. I guess it's just all the same critters in every biome. Okay. Natural. Alright, let's head toward the natural landmark. Because that tends to be where we find the, the weird features the unique geological features oh beyond belief says that was fixed in a patch a month ago uh, Vasco blocking the doorways yeah I guess I haven't had him on my ship in a while so yeah, I'll have to see how that works out. Ooh, there's a natural something over there, too. Oh, hello. Little oh, critter. Well, creepy crawlies on the ground are always difficult for me to find and scan. There we go.
There we go. 100% on that one. Ah, here we go. That's a new one that we haven't scanned before. Oh, this looks like a unique geological feature up here. Some kind of big crazy rock formation. Let's go check it out. Well, for those of you who may not know, I do also have a YouTube channel. That's where I upload all of my past live streams and I have some edited videos and I have lots of other games I've played. I play big games. I play little games. I do like indie games. I've played a lot of those. I've played God of War, Skyrim, Fallout, all kinds of stuff. And games that are kind of in the middle, like Breedfall or, you know, games like that. They're not quite a, what they would call a triple A game, but, you know, not quite an indie game either. All right, there we go. Melted Glacier. So we have the two interesting landmarks scanned. We've scanned all the resources, and now we just got to complete the flora and fauna. We're at 91% of Tirna 2, and then we'll find out... Oh, there's life signs over there. We'll find out if uh, this is a habitable planet. I think it is, but I'm not sure if the oxygen atmosphere is strong enough. But if it is a habitable planet, then that means that that will fulfill... Ooh, that's dead. That will fulfill the requirement for list, and maybe I can get that quest off of my quest journal. Come here, little critter. There must be something useful around here. Hundred percent on that one. Hey, now we're at ninety three. Methane tanks. We gotta find some more of those vines. built an outpost because I just haven't found any place I felt like I wanted to build an outpost put down roots these are all dead see another plant I hadn't scanned before. It looks like a cactus of some kind. Spiny bell cactus. Remote industrial site. Oh, hello. Oh, that's a Varun zealot. Oh, shit. How is it not seeing me and attacking me? 
No, 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 no. Let's leave the rune salads alone. They must have taken over this abandoned facility. We gotta find some more of those cactus things though. Dang, there's another facility over there. Beyond Belief says you mean red fall? I don't know. What are you talking about? I never played red fall. No, there's a game called greed fall. Oh, oh yeah, because I mentioned greed fall. No, there's a game called greed fall that I really like. And they're getting ready to come out with greed fall too. And I'm looking forward to playing that. No, I haven't played Redfall. Julie's saying, if I already have a plus one game long time ago, and if I try to play now, will I get all the bugs fixed, or do I need to load and begin a new game? New game plus will fix a lot of things. Fixes don't apply to old saves, though, beyond belief saying. Yeah, that's what I've heard. That like if you've already played it, like like my uh, Heart of Mars being glitched. If it's glitched and they fix it, I don't get to go back and have it be fixed. I would have to either start a new game or do a new game plus, I guess. But yeah, I I don't care enough to start over again just for that personally. What have you got there? A vine? Sandy desert. Mountains, 90%. Volcanic, 70%. But it just seems like I'm finding a lot of the same things everywhere. Let's go there. There is more to New Game Plus than just bug fixes. Like what? What's different in New Game Plus? I mean, I know that you get uh, an outfit and a ship. But other than that, what's different? All right, that one's 100% scanned. Uh, 
All right, maybe we'll find some more cactus here. I mean, some story beats with constellation change, right? But if you don't care about constellation, then what's the point of doing New Game Plus? Like, if I don't want a Starborn ship and I don't care about having the Starborn outfit, and I don't care about constellation, then what's the point of New Game Plus? I like the rocks here, they look cool. Let's see if we can rock climb. Okay, Dave's saying there's random different starts. Huh. Alright, so you don't start in the mine again? As a miner? There's new dialogue. Julia says new merchant, maybe? And more enemies? <laughs> Powers increase. Okay. Well... I'm still not hearing anything that I would find compelling enough to want to play the game over again. Uh. All right, looks like there might be some vines and things down there. Okay. That's an interesting specimen. I think after I finish up whatever I'm going to do with Starfield, I'm going to play, I'm going to try playing uh, Baldur's Gate. I don't know what I'll think of Baldur's Gate, to be honest. I don't usually like to play strategy type games, party management. And it's been ages since I played Dungeons and Dragons, so I am like super out of touch with whatever the new rules are. The spells, the races, all that stuff's changed since I played it years ago. Looks like a ship is landing. Anybody see a ship? Oh, there it is. At least it's not a dang starborn ship. God, I get so tired of those.
Here, let's hide in the bushes and see if we can figure out who it is. What's it say? Keep her? Who is this? Hunter. Excuse me, pardon. Your friend just died. You don't even care? Huh. All right. Good luck with that. There's cactus. Oh, we've gotten all the fauna. Now we just gotta finish the flora. I think I gotta finish these cactuses. <laughs> Cact cacti. And those crawling vines. a lot of plant life out here. There's a vine. There's some cactus. All right, let's go toward the vine. Done with that one. Now we'll get the cactus over here. And we're done with that one. Surveyed. Hey, we did it. Sell a habitable planet survey data to list. Finally. Oh my God. We finally found a habitable planet and we surveyed it. I had surveyed another planet thinking it was habitable, but it wasn't. It had poisonous water or something. The poisonous water ended up killing me. That might have not have been the only thing that was wrong with the planet, but... But yeah, it didn't count toward finishing this quest. So, oh my god, now I can finally finish it. Alright, we cannot return the samples though. I'm carrying a ton of contraband, so let's go sell some contraband. Where's the red mile? <laughs> I don't remember what system has the red mile. You guys know off the top of your head? I can look it up. Is it Jaffa? Rima, Dave saying. Okay. Ah, it's close. <laughs> because I hear tell that the Red Mile bartender will buy my contraband. Oh, Paradiso. Is it in the same system as Paradiso? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. 
I'm not going to get scanned and get in trouble out here, am I? <laughs> Do sing. How about a start where everyone in Constellation is gone or dead? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like Constellation, there's just not a hook, right? It's just... Yeah. You can skip the main story in New Game Plus. Alright, but then what's the point? I mean, what is there to do other than everything you've already done over again? He stops the Starborn ships from spawning. Yeah. If you don't uh, do the main story. Okay. Beyond Belief says, I'm out. Catch you on the flip side. Alright, thanks for stopping in. Julia's never had contraband. You can try different dialogue options. Yeah. Um, Alright, let's try going to the Red Mile and see if we get scanned. I know that the den is safe, and I know that you can sell contraband at the key, but I've already done the quest line where we destroy the Crimson Fleet. And I sided with Sista, so the key is not there, and I can't sell contraband. But yeah, the you Red Mile is... This air. Let's get our suits on. I've got my suit on. I don't know where you, what you're doing. Yeah, I've got my whole suit on. All right, let's go into the Red Mile. I've been here. I've run the Red Mile. I did that for the Free Star Ranger quest line. I also grabbed a book. There's a book here that you can take back to the Sam Co. Well, it's not Sam Co, but the, his family. The Co Heritage Museum in Aquila City. I've gotten that. Hey. All right, I think we can talk to the bartender. We certainly get a lot of interesting people. Sure. What would you like? Can I sell contraband? I can. There you go. There you go. Alright, well it's good to know I've got something other than the den. The reason I go to the den usually is because there is a trade authority guy there who will buy any of the contraband and there's no one that scans you when you go there. I think you could probably try to sell, you can sell contraband to the trade authority guy in Neon and also the trade authority lady in the well if you're not like if you either have like shielded cargo so they can't scan you and find it or if you happen to find contraband on those in those places you can take it straight over and sell it to them but if i don't have any shielded cargo so if they scanned me they would catch me with this stuff and it's illegal All right. I'll be here if you need anything. Hello. Where's Adrian? Former winners are always welcome back here. Oh, okay, thanks. Where did Adrian go? Before I put a bullet in your head. That runners come and go, but the mile. Red needs mile to patron. Red mile patron. Huh, did Hadrian not oh Hadrian's sitting at the bar. <laughs> hey, just so you know, I don't want to down the drinks like our last party. Okay. Let me be clear. Alright, let's get out of here. Yeah, the other named companions that aren't in constellation, like Hadrian, like Ezekiel, like Danny, like Amelia. 
they don't seem to care if you have contraband or if you steal things. I don't think they have any dialogue for it. They're pretty neutral, so if you don't want to run around with Constellation, there are several other companions. But I haven't really done anything terribly bad. I don't do a lot of stealing. I mean, the worst thing I do is sell contraband. But I don't kill innocent people, and I don't... I have something for you, Captain. ...take stuff marked steel, generally. Oh, Hadrian has something for me? What have you got for me, Hadrian? So I don't know. I mean, maybe if you do something really bad, they won't want to follow you, but I think they're pretty, pretty neutral. Unless they're in Constellation. If you're... The Constellation folks don't want you to do anything wrong at all, or they will get mad and leave. Where'd you go, Hadrian? Hey, Zeke. Hey, Captain. Hey, have you seen Hadrian? She said she had something for me. Alright, well... Now that we've unloaded the contraband... Let's return the samples of the Apex Predator that we collected on Tierna 2. We gotta go back to Sidonia for that. At the TMD headquarters. Yeah, yeah, Dave saying Wolfston and the key. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. You might have missed it. I can't sell anything to the key though because I sided with Sistef. And we destroyed the key. <laughs> Oh. Hey. Ah, you must be the one with the samples then. I'll get these logged ASAP. If you're interested in collecting more, you can speak to Dr. Walker. Okay, oh, cool. And your pay? Here you are. Thank you, uh, Captain. So I don't actually have to go inside and talk to anybody in the facility. Oh, well, thanks for coming out and meeting me. All right. Need a hand Adrian, you said you had something for me. Sure, Captain. See you around. Uh. Any new orders for me? Have something for me? Do you have something for me? You said you did. Maybe you gotta be back on the ship for her to hand it to me. Alright. Let's go get back on the ship. But yeah, I usually go to the den to sell my contraband stuff. Well, the trade authority will buy stolen stuff though too, right? That's a reason to go to New Game Plus is to uh, side with the Crimson Fleet. Or I could just start over again. <laughs> I mean, I have done that. You know, like I played through Skyrim and then started over again and played through as a bad person who joined the Assassin's Guild, the Dark Brotherhood. And I joined the Stormcloaks, and I did all the things that I hadn't done in my first playthrough. This is for you, Captain. I found it oh, on okay. our travels. What'd you find? Thank you. I appreciate Take it. Take good care of it. That kind of thing can be useful. What's it gonna be? It's been nice to dust off my old field collecting skills. I haven't done this kind of thing in a long time. Okay. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. What? So am I. I've forgotten how much I liked working in the field. I'd be happy to share some of the samples I collect. Check back any time. I might have something for you. Okay. Cosmetic gland added. Oh, okay. So she just kind of gives you random animal parts and stuff. All right, cool. All right, Hadrian. Look who it is. You can return to your post. Yes, Captain. Travel safely. All right, bye-bye. I think I'm going to boot her off the ship. I brought her with me because I was doing that uh, xenobiology quest, but now that I've done that, I think she can go back to doing what she was doing with the other xenobiologists. Bye-bye. It was nice having you aboard. Thanks for the assist. You can leave now. Alright, so we can go back to List. The List guy is usually in just about any bar I go to, so... <laughs> just pick a bar. He's probably in the bar here in Sidonia. The Broken Spear. Cave explored. Oh, extract the Heart of Mars. Yeah, it's not going to work for me. Um, Mars launch pad partially explored. Really? All right, let's go to Sidonia. Hello, first time chat, Mr. Mississippi 38. All right, welcome, welcome. Okay, let's go see if we can find the list guy. For those of you who have just joined me or who may not otherwise know, I do have a YouTube channel. That's usually where I do most of my content. I have more than 10 times as many followers over there as I have on Twitch. I just happen to be live streaming Starfield because I'm playing it on an Xbox. It's the first game I've ever played on Xbox X. Or on any Xbox. It's my first Xbox. Uh, usually I play on PC or Careful PlayStation. On the upper levels. I can't remember the down. last time I played a game on PlayStation though. It's been a while. But I do a lot of PC games. But I'm playing this one on an Xbox and so I'm streaming to Twitch because that's quick and easy. Broken Spear. The list guy should be in here. I keep wanting to call him Chris because he looks exactly like a dude I knew in college who was named Chris. Okay. Hello. All right, my Hi dude. There, His name is Bill Hill, though. I think I might be sleeping with my eyes open. But man, he looks exactly like the Chris I knew. In Los Angeles. All right. Um, I have a planet survey for Terrific. you. Terrific. Let's take a look. Sell a habitable planet survey. Oh, I guess I have all of this survey data. I can sell it to him. Here's the Tierna 2 survey data. I think I can sell this other survey data maybe to Vladimir? I'm not sure. Huh. I didn't realize. Okay. Alright. You got any recruiting materials? Oh my! I completely forgot! Yes, of course. We have an amazing pamphlet called Top of the List, which is scientifically proven to work 90% of the time. Though, I'm afraid there's a small fee to cover printing expenses. But your commission <laughs> will more than make up for that, I can assure you. Oh my god, this guy. Yeah, okay. Wha-bam! Give me the <laughs> pamphlets.
Okay. Careful out there. Sure. Do I have any more missions for him? Activities or anything? No. This is glitched. Uh, yeah, I can go back to Paradiso. Artemis is glitched. Light in the darkness. Yeah, I'm not doing that one. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like I could go back to the ECS constant. I've heard there's some side quests and things to do there. And I can also visit my room on Paradiso. Hello. Hello. Nameless damage control specialist. I could use it. All right, let's get out of here. A lot of people coming into the bar. Goodness gracious. All right, I don't have to go all the way back out to my ship. I can just fast travel. But yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's the same name as my Twitch channel, Jewel Smith. Let's dock with this. This is the Earth Colony ship constant. What is the nature of your communication? Uh, it's Nova. I'm just checking on you. Seems like your communication systems are working now. I don't know. Oops, didn't mean to hell you by. Okay, this one's grayed out. I think I've used that before. That Let's say are. that. Um, don't need anything. I guess I'll catch you around. Are the ship upgrades working oh, out so far? Yeah, they're great. Thanks again for securing them for us. I've been playing around with the new communication systems ever since we got them. And while I've been itching to kick off that graph drive, I've been told it's probably not a great idea until we figured out where we're going. Hmm. Okay. I guess I'll catch you around, maybe. Great. All right, let's board and see if we can talk to anybody, get any side quests, find out what's going on with this ship. Because it's just sitting there. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. We fixed the grab drive. I thought I was done with them. But they just sit there. Hey, Zeke. You Come look along. Well today. Thank you, sweetheart. Come on, let's go. You got some new orders for me? Yeah. Good. Come I'd with. Like to stretch my legs a bit. Let's go. Ezekiel is now following you. Yay! Oh, that's my room. Uh, we got to go through the bridge. Oh no no no. We're not going out the back way. We're going up the hatch, right? I was going the right way. Okay. We gotta go this way. So let's poke around in the ECS constant and talk to everyone. I haven't done that. I did the quest here, the main quest thing when I first arrived, but I haven't really talked to anyone. Why do I feel so tall? Like my head is in the pipes. Why am I so much taller than you, Zeke? 
Am I? Or is it just perspective? Yeah, I seem like I'm tall. Well, I, mean, I got my boots on. Alright. Just head in. Stay. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work to take down troublemakers. Okay. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, These are I haven't seen times. any okay. ships before you arrived. We're just gonna We've talk to everybody. Rules now that we know there are other people out there, we need to be more prepared for trouble than ever. We were never trained to address threats coming from outside our ship. Okay. Engineering command bay. I think I've been in engineering. Now that we know what's up, careful waving that fancy gun around. You don't need to see what it can do. Okay. Today's lessons. Oh, it's a school. I heard you came from outside the ship. I bet it was pretty cold out there. Hello there. Given that I don't know you, you must be this visitor I've been hearing so much about. I'm Julia, the Constance chief historian. It's nice to meet you on this momentous occasion. What can you tell me about the Constant? Can you tell me more about what it means to be chief historian? I'll ask if that. If you ask around, people will either tell you my job is absolutely critical to the mission, or I just hang out, read, and watch movies. There's more to it than that. Officially, I'm assigned to the role of Chief Historian. Generations ago, it used to be Law Keeper of Humanity, but that seemed a bit too lofty. While I don't think my job is as important as Captain, Engineering Officer, or Cultivation Manager, it's still vital to our mission. Okay. Has it been difficult to learn nearly 200 years of history you weren't part of? Not much different than the previous history I was teaching. There's just a lot more of it now. There's a lot for us to catch up on. Scientific advancements, social studies, even pop culture. Geography is different now that there are so many planets. It can seem a little overwhelming at times, but we're getting there. Yeah, even though this ship is 200 years old, everything on it looks exactly the same as everything everywhere else in the galaxy. What can you tell me about the Constant? As Chief Historian, I can tell you a lot, probably. What do you want to know? Hey, do you want to play hide and seek later? Who were the original uh, no. crew of the Constant? We're the descendants of wealthy elites, intellectuals, artists, no, scientists, and others who left Earth in 2040 to spread humanity to the stars. The thinking was that Earth's days were numbered for a variety of reasons. Our finder, Rupert Brackenridge, had the foresight to plan for the worst. Thus, he constructed this colony ship to settle what seemed like the most habitable planet we could find, knowing full well it would take generations to reach. We suspected that we may have been the only ones to leave Earth, given that no one else seemed to have the same idea. I'm glad we appear to be wrong. How long have you been traveling? Well, it's been like 200 well, years, right? we launched Tuesday, September 27th, 2140. So, about 190 years now. Would have been longer, but it turns out we have an ace navigator who saved us some time with some tricky maneuvers. And why is the ship called the ECS Constant? ECS stands for Earth Colony Ship. We wanted a fairly inclusive name to represent the planet, and not a particular nation of origin. There was an old colony ship that sailed across the oceans of Earth from a country called England to settle on a new continent. It was called either the Susan or Sarah Constant. No one seems to know for sure. So ours was shortened to just Constant. Ironically enough, that ship also reached what they thought was new land, and found it populated when they arrived. As Chief Historian, I can tell you a lot, probably. What do you want to know? 
Uh, I guess nothing else. It's all grayed out. You know where to find me if you ever want to know more. Okay. I hope you'll come back. There's so much to learn. Captain Brackenridge says the future is bright, but I think the cost is pretty bright too, I so there. I don't really know what she means. What do you mean? There were animals on Earth. Why aren't there any animals? I guess we'll go down to the mess hall and see what's what down there. Julie saying this mission reminded me Will there be animals there? the chapter of the 100 where they became cannibals. They were trapped for so long. The chapter of the 100. I don't know if I'm familiar with that. Oh, it's a novel. Okay. I still can't get over how we're not the only ones out here. Really? I always knew it couldn't be true. There had to be someone living out here. Hey, weren't you just saying the week before we arrived? But as far as I know, they we haven't become uh, cannibals so here yet. <laughs> that you know, I, I'm I'm really surprised because no. Bethesda tends to yeah. like putting cannibals really, in their games. I mean, I sure there was me. You're lucky we're under orders not to escort. There's usually right some kind of shit. creepiness going on everywhere. Okay. That's one thing. You know, that's something else about this game. I mean, for good or for bad, whether you like it or don't like it, it's not as quirky or as creepy as other Bethesda games. Like, Fallout and The Elder Scrolls are just chock full of a lot of creepiness and weirdness and just plain old wackiness. Um, and this game tends to play it a little bit straighter, I think. I mean, there's been a few little weird things here and there but yeah they're playing it a lot more straight in in starfield and i don't know i don't personally i don't like that i like the weirdness and the quirkiness and the creepiness and all of that but see right there he's eating people he's eating people he looks like a cannibal Okay. Alright, so does anybody wow. have a name? I've heard about you, but Oh hey! I've been Hi. hearing a lot about you. You're the one who helped us out of that mess so we can find a new place to live. I'm yeah. Dice K, the Constance Provisions Manager. It's nice of you to come back and visit so I can finally meet you in person. Let oh, me know if okay. there's anything I can help you with. Sure. Uh where do you get your supplies? We sometimes dock with trade vessels and supply depots along the way. When we do, I manage to pick up goods to sell. We still provide most necessities to our crew, but they may buy extra or afford some luxury items. Sometimes, we even sell to visitors. Like me? Do you get a lot of customers? The idea of a shop is new to the crew, so business is pretty good in that sense. Most of the money goes towards our communal funds, though. And we get some business from various visitors and traders when we meet up with them. <laughs> Dark Arrow saying, did one of the kids' cats in that school run away? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's a reference to another another Bethesda game. Uh, I'm curious to know what you have for Just sale. Just the basics. We can also make a deal for anything you want to offer. Yeah, I didn't talk to all the kids in the school, did I? Maybe I should have. Alright, so he's got... Weapons, ammo, spacesuits. I doubt he's got anything that I need. Ooh, that's pretty nice. I do like the Trackers Alliance spacesuits. I think they look cool. But the stats just aren't as good as the one I'm wearing. Let's look. Yeah. I really like the look of the shock troop spacesuit too. But it's also not as good as what I've already got. Man, I really like this though. 
I think I've got one of these back home in Aquila City. It may not have as good as stats on it, though. I'm going to buy it. What the heck? If I'm going to be out exploring the galaxy, I want to look cool while I'm doing it. This is a nice suit. I like the way it looks. This is the one that Zeke has on right now. I don't like that. I'd like to put him in this. Maybe I'll buy it. That's a cool looking pack. I like the way it looks. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to sell all this stuff. I should probably clear it all out. I'm not really going to need it or use it. <laughs> Take care. All right, let's get on with seeing if we can sure find people. Sure, it's nice to know there are other people out there with a name. Boy, am I glad you weren't some sort of alien or something. Wow. Hi. Hi. How do we get into the habitat area? Yeah, we had to come in here and help them fix their grab drive. Keeping a 200-year-old sheep running is no easy task. Um, you said you had more questions for me? Yes, so many. Does everyone have their own spaceships like you? Do people only live on naturally habitable planets, or did they learn to terraform? Are we in contact with alien species? I have so many more, but I don't want to take up all your time. <laughs> Well, not everyone has ships, but many people do. <laughs> I knew it! Incredible! Amazing! Simply amazing! In our ancestors' time, only the very wealthy could afford to build ships. 
Even this ship was only possible by our families pulling together nearly all of their financial resources. No terraforming, but there are colonies on hin inhospitable planets. We just use HAB units and suits. Hmm. I'm not surprised. The amount of energy it would take to terraform an entire planet seems improbable. I can assume these types of colonies are strictly for mining and gathering rare resources since there are nearly limitless habitable planets to choose from out there. No sentient life as far as we can tell, but plenty of diverse living creatures. Disappointing, but not unexpected. When you showed up, I tried to tell the others about the Fermi Paradox. I suggested that the most likely explanation for you was that humanity had developed faster, more advanced technology and had leapfrogged us. Seems I was right. He's a pretty smart guy. All right, uh, I guess that's all I can answer for ah, now. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I can have a bit of a big personality, I'm told. So let me know if I ever get on your nerves. Okay. With a ship this old, do you have any good heroic engineering stories? Many years ago, when I was a junior engineer, the reactor's computer burned out. The computer that controls the reactor's various regulators. I'll spare you the details, but when that happens, the ship and everyone on it is in danger of turning into a mess of hot slag. I had to jury rig parts from old media devices to prevent a meltdown. And that's how I became the boss around here. And what do you do as chief engineer? Some may say I'm a master of keeping things together with nothing but duct tape and bubble gum. Well, if we had any gum left. Pretty sure that ran out a hundred years ago. When I'm not dealing with catastrophic engine failures, I manage the other engineers. We maintain all the machinery, computers, you name it. We keep the life support on and the ship flying. That's a pretty serious job. So long. All right, I mean. Yeah. All right, do you have a name? No, you're just a colonist. Do you have a name? I just heard from the bridge that they've been getting some false positives from the sensor. Wonder what else is out there? I don't know. Go down this way. Medical bay. Ah, here we go. Into the little green park area. Do they actually have birds in here or are they just playing bird sounds? I'm worried about Janet. I wonder if someone from the outside can help her. We're okay, so who's Janet? Speak own. with Janet. Are you Janet? You're a colonist. Well, at least we got the quest marker now. We can turn that on. Hydroponics. Hello? How many more days, months, years? of being cooped up here before we find a new place to live. Where's the medical bay? There's so much more to learn about now. And to think all this time we thought we were alone. I've never treated anyone from outside our ship. But if you need help, I'm here for you. I hear you're the one who helped us out of that mess. It's good to meet you. I suppose I have you to thank for my husband Mabuti's continued survival. Do I? Do you? What? What was wrong with Mabuti? Why was he dying? No. But he was in danger of being terminated. The oh, UCS no. Constant had a very strict population control measure that we needed to enact because resources and living spaces were scarce. The eldest of us would volunteer to terminate themselves to make room when needed. Mabuti, being the kind soul he is, volunteered. It may seem harsh, but it was needed for our continued survival. 
That's terrible, but I understand it's necessary for the greater good. How barbaric. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, hopefully the situation no longer calls for that. Yeah, I'll say I that. certainly hope so, too. It shouldn't. Alright, um... How is Mabuti doing now that we solved the scarcity issues? In theory, yes. Thanks to you. Since we are free to travel wherever we want and communicate with other ships, we aren't worried about running out of supplies. So, voluntary terminations have been put on hold for the time being. Of course, we may still run into problems with living space aboard the ship if we go too long without finding a new home. What happened if two population grew too much? What? What happened if two population... <laughs> Alright, that's a bit of a typo. What happens if the population grows too much? We tried our best to avoid that through careful family planning. Rarely we ran into situations where things did not go according to plan. And then we needed to adjust and make difficult decisions concerning our community and resources. We never did anything without careful consideration. But at the end of the day, we needed to do what was best for the ship so as not to put everyone in jeopardy. Yikes. Can I assume you're the chief medical officer? Indeed. There aren't many doctors on board. In addition to regular checkups, I perform surgeries, obstetrics, and other medical procedures. I also help train the next generation of doctors. After all, someone must. It's demanding work. Okay. I could use some supplies, Assuming I guess. Assuming I've got what you need, we can trade your currency for it. What has she got? Yeah, I don't need any of that. Well, it'd be kind of cool if I could bring supplies to her. I got tons of stuff, but... Ooh, I, I guess there's no option for that. Alright. Alright, so we have this quest about Julie. Let's see what that's all about. Or, I'm sorry, Janet, not Julie. <laughs> Julie's in the chat room. Janet is in the game. Alright, let's go find Janet. It was J name. Where is Janet? I've lived my entire life in the constant. I'm not sure how else to live. Oh, it's over there. Okay, how do we get there? Hey. Uh, I can't go that way. Hey, maybe you could help out, Abe. Eh? He's been talking about needing someone with a ship. Okay, who's Abe? Holly G. The right, constant is a piece of shit. Don't change the world. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen it. Uh, how do I get? We were never trained to address threats coming from outsiders. Uh, be careful. Some of the crew are not happy with your meddling. They wish to be on solid ground. Sure is nice to know that are drift other in space out. for any longer. I know Captain Brackenridge has essentially given you free reign to wander the ship, but security will still be watching you closely. I hope you understand, given we have so little experience with people from the outside. It pays to take security seriously. Something I understand much better now than in my youth. Okay. I don't have any other dialogue with him. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work to take down troublemakers. We got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. I wasn't looking forward to working my way out of debt for those losers anyway. Spaceflight is my life. 
You're the one who helped us out of that mess with the Paradiso group. Nice to finally meet you. I'm Nova. I didn't catch your name. Oh, jeez. Sorry, of course you don't know my name. We never met. I'm Yue. Wow, I never thought this would happen. Good to meet you. I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Never thought of it that way. Well, get used to it. What? Uh, I'll let you get back to what you're doing. Sure. Well, unless there's anything else you want to talk about. What do you do here on the ship? I'm the navigation officer. I pilot too, though the ship was designed to pretty much fly itself, so I don't get to do that as much as I'd like. But I'm helping us to chart courses for new worlds. The data we got from Paradiso has been quite handy for that. Then it's just up to the captain to make the call on where to settle down. Okay. If the ship flies itself, why does it need a navigator? See, the nav system's not perfect. We encounter stuff that our forebears didn't originally count on. Astral bodies, space debris, stuff like that. So sometimes I need to take manual control and get out of tricky situations. Then there was the time I used those unaccounted for anomalies to our advantage. Slingshotted us around a few stars that weren't supposed to be there. Saved some fuel and knocked a few decades off our journey. Pretty incredible stuff. What do you think now that you know there are others out there? <laughs> it's incredible. I'm pretty excited to meet new people and ask them all sorts of questions. Okay. I wonder about all we've missed this whole time while humanity has advanced around us. Um, I guess all those questions she has are not for me, Captain, so... I think I may have found us a new planet to check out. Looks like it might be suitable for our new home. Okay, where's the captain? Boy, am I glad you weren't some sort of alien or something. Now that we know what's out there, things are going to be more interesting for just stay out of trouble. Nope, she's asleep in here again. That's usually where I find her every time I come in here. That planet was not right for us anyway. No doubt the next one will be. Why do you need to find a new home instead of just assimilating into modern society? That's a good question. But I firmly believe that establishing our own home is what our ancestors would want for us. I think that we will assimilate to some degree, particularly when it comes to trade and exchange of ideas. However, we've fared by ourselves for so long, it would be unreasonable for our people to give up our own sovereignty in favor of a completely different society's rules and expectations. It may seem like it's about me maintaining control, but it's more about avoiding massive culture shock. We'll get there, but we'll need to ease into it so future generations can reap the benefits. If she's been on the ship for almost 200, or these people have been on the ship for almost 200 years, where are they getting lipstick and eyeliner and stuff? Do they bring quite a supply of it with them? Is it like 200 year old lipstick? Maybe they're making it from plants on the ship? I, I don't know. That seems like it'd be a pretty low priority thing. Um, how's your crew holding up? Understandably, some are disappointed that we gave up our home, but I think I've managed to convince them that this will be best in the long term. I have no doubt that even if it takes more time, we will manage to find something even better. And it's important to remember we're still way ahead of our original schedule. Everything will be fine. Is it difficult being captain for a colony ship? Mm, difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a bracken ridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. How long have you been captain? I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. Don't okay. forget to tell of us in your travels. Great. How do I get to Janet? 
Now that we know there are other people out there. Our people the constant is a peaceful ship. You're lucky we're under orders not to escort you right off the ship. Well, is it through here? Nope, this is just a cabinet. through there. Yeah. That's engineering. Careful waving that fancy gun around. We don't need to see what it can do. I'm not waving nothing around. The constant is a peaceful ship. Don't change. Oh, maybe that. she's in records. Here we go. You're lucky we're under orders to right off the ship. Julia, I have a question. Sure. What is it? If there were animals on Earth, why aren't there any animals hey. here? Oh. Hey. Well, there wasn't enough. I've lived my entire life in the constant. We only have room. I'm not sure. David Copperfield and the origin of the species. Okay. Oh, here we go. She's asleep in her room. Living quarters. Hey, Janet. Oh, I hear you've got a quest. Me. The visitor who helped us get into the situation we're now in, roaming the galaxy with no end in sight. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be ungrateful or rude. I'm just frustrated. You don't seem very happy with your life on the ECS constant. What do you do here? What's it like living? Okay, you don't seem very happy with your Is life. It that obvious. Brackenridge is intent on finding a home just as perfect as Paradiso, and it's clear that's never going to happen. I just scanned I'd a planet that's pretty good. to leave. But outside of you and the occasional passing trade ships we make contact with, there aren't any ways off this ship. And oh, besides, I'll take you. Brackenridge forbids it. I've tried. She insists we stay together for the sake of the community. I'm stuck here. Uh-oh. Um, I guess I could try to convince Captain Brackenridge to let you leave. It's a long shot. You've dealt with her. You know she can be stubborn. But then again, you did make her see reason before and set us on this path. Maybe you can do it again and fix this mess. Sorry. Or maybe you could just sneak onto my ship. Like I won't it, tell. I'd actually be really grateful to you. If you succeed. Okay. Um. Escape from the endless voyage. Speak with Diana. Alright, I was just there, but okay. What's going on in here? Hi. I, uh, Hi. Uh, Hello. Oh, you're Abe. Can we talk? Oh, uh, hi. Hello. You're the alien. Uh, sorry, old habit. Let me start over. You're the person <laughs> who helped us with our little dilemma, aren't you? It's okay. Let's just move on. Wow, you really need to chill out. Are you okay? It's I'll fine. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm just a bundle of nerves still. Things haven't changed too much since we decided to look for a new planet to call home. People still come to me with their problems and concerns. Abe, when are we gonna get there? Abe, 
can we find a planet with animals? Abe, I'm sick of this ship and want to be anywhere but here, and so on and so forth. It's fine, it's my job, but it's stressful, and I'm already a pretty anxious guy to begin with. Just ask my husband. Uh, it's okay, let's just move on. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> deep breath, here we go. <sighs> I'm Abe. Levitz. Abe Levitz, cabin manager on board the ship, so I'm happy to help you with anything you need during your stay with us. Uh, thanks, I'll keep I'm you in mind. I'm happy to schmooze with you anytime. Okay, sounds like you need help with something. What do you do as cabin manager? Can you tell me more about yourself? Did people really think I was some sort of alien? I don't recognize some of the words you're using. Can you help me out? No, I, I, well, I do recognize the words. Um, I don't know why that option is there. Did people really think I was some sort of alien? People didn't know what to think. Here we are, minding our own business out in deep space, all alone. Then we hear some sort of gobbled transmissions on the radio, real screechy, real inhuman sounding stuff. Then you show up. People had all sorts of fakakta theories, aliens, time travelers, you name it. <laughs> we watch a lot of old movies, so... Anyway, it spooked the bejesus out of us, because we were expecting to find nobody. All right, can you tell me more about yourself? Me? Hey, well, there's not much to say. I take care of people here. I live with my husband, Daisuke. No kids. Though that might change now that we no longer need to worry about resources so much. Instead, I get to spend time with everyone in their families here. They call me their booby because I'm like the grandmother they never had. I may have had something to do with that nickname. <laughs> I think his husband was the guy that was running the mess hall downstairs. Uh, Alright, I guess I'll say this, even though it doesn't apply, but I'll say it. Oh? Oh, you must mean the Yiddish. It's an old, old, old family tradition. The Levitts have been trying to keep it alive for hundreds of years now. See, we didn't think the language would survive if we didn't, so we charged ourselves with preserving it. It's a point of pride for our family and something I'd like to pass on to others so they don't forget. Like my great, 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 great grandmother's latke recipe. <laughs> Okay. So what do you do as cabin manager? Ah, glad you asked. I coordinate cabin maintenance, plan activities, even help settle domestic disputes. It's a demanding job, but in short, I'm here to keep people happy. I try to keep both the kids and adults entertained. Scavenger hunts, sing-alongs, fun little art projects, you name it. We also have regular media nights where our historian, Julia Yang, screens old movies, plays music, and exposes us to other Earth media. Cool. It sounds like you need help I'm... with something. Oh, you heard? Uh, I was just quetching to myself. Mostly I just need to find someone with a ship, but hey, you're someone with a ship, aren't you? I am. <laughs> I am. Just tell me what you need. I'll save you the spiel, but ever since we found out that people exist out there, the crew's been asking me if we could track down possible relatives. I made the mistake of looking some up, and now they want to connect with them. Now, okay. I'm not going to ask you to schlep anyone back and forth, but... I would. That would be something. Could you deliver these messages for us to connect our crew with their relatives? Sure. I'll do it. Tell me where to go, who to find... I'll do it, but I need compensation. You want me to ambush people with news of lost relatives? No, thanks. No, I'll do it. Sounds oh, like fun. Oh, such a mensch! Thank you! That's me, I'm Let the mensch. Let me get you the letter and the information you'll need to track down the relative. Just one? I thought there were multiples. Happy Bert. <laughs> yes, a thousand times yes. Oh, how sweet. Maybe that's a post-it note about their proposal when they got married. Little sketches and pictures. I've seen that space kitten one before in the game. Right there.
Okay, so... What? Hey! Sorry! Yeesh! Bite the head off, Abe, why don't you? Sorry, I'm just having one of those days where people expect big things from me and I can't handle it all by myself. What can I do for you? I thought you were going to get me some names and stuff. See you later, I hope. Um, what? Speak with Abe. Yeah? He's right there. Oh! I, mostly I just need to find someone. I'll save you the spiel. I made the mistake of... Now, yeah. I'm not... Yeah, I'll do it. Oh, you're such a... Let me get you the letter and the information you'll need to track down the relative. Okay. It's just kicking me back to speak with Diana. Well, that's a bummer. I guess it's another broken quest. Wow. I wonder what else is out there. All right, so I guess I have to go talk to the captain. That you think all this time we thought we were alone. Oh, Just because our security. equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work to take down troublemakers. Maybe this is where I would end up if I tried stealing anything. Careful waving that fancy gun around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were never trained to address threats coming from outside our ship. Oh, more living quarters in here. Do you have a name? Are you alive? Oh, okay, she's moving. <gasps> hey, maybe you could help out Abe. He's been talking about needing someone with Perhaps them. As long as our people. Oh, are this together, is the guy that's married to the doctor. Always feel like home. Um what do you do here? I'm a doctor and a counselor. I assist my wife Lorelai in performing minor medical duties, but I also practice psychology and help maintain our crew's mental health. Okay. Why were you one of the ones to come greet me when I first arrived? I know it must seem strange to you. I am not a captain, nor am I a security guard. But I was brought along for a very specific reason. The captain trusts me to de-escalate situations. Uh, pardon me saying, but we did not know who you were or what your intents were. So, Captain Breckenridge wanted me to come along as a friendly face and keep the conversation amicable. I am glad that you were peaceful, and my role was as limited as it was. Thank you. Okay, what was life like living on a colony ship for all these years? Ah, uh, life on a colony ship has its ups and downs, as you can probably imagine. I tend to look on the bright side of things, however. To the best of our knowledge, we were on a critical mission saving the human race from extinction. That notion was always with us, and it instilled a sense of pride and duty. Sure, the living quarters could be considered cramped, and we could go nowhere else. But we also had near endless time with friends and loved ones. I suppose as I get on in years, I have learned to appreciate that more than anything. Your wife said you had volunteered for termination. Why did you do that? Back when resources were concerned, it was a necessity for our continued survival. The old make way for the young. That's how it had always been. Our daughter is now pregnant with her second child, and the constant was at capacity. It seemed only fitting that the oldest of our family make way for the youngest. But now, 
There is no need for that anymore. And so, I get to live out the remainder of my days. As you can imagine, Lorelei is much happier now. Such a kind and generous sacrifice, but I bet you're glad you don't need to go through with it. To each their own. That sounds foolish. Um, I bet you're glad you don't have to go through with it. I now. am. But I would have gone through with it if need be. It is the way I was raised to be. To make sacrifices so that others may live on. There used to be an elderly couple on board. They had no children, so their family name was to die with them. I convinced Lorelei that we should take it on in their honor, which is why we are now the DeCostas. My brother will continue our family legacy. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. The pleasure was mine. Thank you for the chat. Uh, I know. They're telling me to Great. go talk to Abe again. How many more days? Months? Years? Of well, cooped up here before we find a new place to live. Hi. Do you have a name? There's so much more to learn about now. Colonist, colonist. Okay. Well, they're telling me to go talk to Abe again, so... It's not so bad. Oh, you heard? Uh, I'm going to try choosing a different dialogue Mostly option. I just need to find someone with a ship, but hey, you Yep. I'll what do save you, need? you the speed. I made the mistake. Now, I'm not going to Okay, I'm going to say I can do it, but I'll need compensation cuz I keep saying I'll do it, but he's not going through with it. So let's try a different dialogue branch. Of course. Yes, of course. Well, as you know, we don't have much, but I'll find something for you. Let me get you the letter and the information you'll need to track down the relative. Nope, still nothing. He goes inside. He's going to sit down. How am I going to find these people? I don't even have a ship! And I get speak with Abe. Wow. Okay, well, I guess that's yet another broken, bugged, glitched quest in this game, so, oh well. Now that we know there are other people out there, we need to be more prepared for trouble than ever. Alright, let's go talk to the captain. Now that we know what's out there, things are going to be more interesting from here on out. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen it. All right, I need to try to persuade this lady. So let's use some persuasion. Hippolyta. My crew may not realize it now, but we will be much happier with a home of our own. Okay, Janet wants to leave. I told her I'd talk to you about it. <sighs> I'm well aware of Janet's desire to leave. I'll tell you the same thing I told her for the sake of our mission and community. We need to stay together. Each member of our community is valuable, especially Janet. If she left, we'd be at least a couple of weeks behind in food production while we trained someone to fill her role. But hmm, I suppose if you brought us more food staples to tide us over while that happens, we could do it. Say, a large quantity of potatoes? Give 50 potatoes. This should ensure you have adequate food while you train someone else. Persuade, I think you should consider just letting her go. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'll be the judge of that. So I don't have to go try to find 50 potatoes. Janet's not really... Janet's really not happy. You don't want her disposition to jeopardize your mission? I suppose not. 
It would be bad for all of us if she slipped into depression. Oh, uh, I get it. You've got your orders. I've got mine. Yeah, I hope so. So you're saying no now, but if I annoy you enough, you'll say yes eventually? You know what? I may be starting to like you. <sighs> Doubt that. I knew you were a reasonable person. I try to be. Well, you've got away with words. I'll give you that. <laughs> Once do again, I? you convinced me to do the right <laughs> thing. And while I'm not happy about letting one of our Persuasion own Persuasion dialogue is so lame. I think you're right. It's for the best. Let her know she's free to leave on the next ship willing to take her. I just hope this doesn't prompt others to want to leave as well. Well, you better hurry up and pick a planet then. Then maybe they won't be trying to leave. Jeez. In the long right. run, this would be better for us. Let's go find Janet. Again. She's down there. Where was the medical hall? I wonder what it's like out there beyond our little Nope, this is the bathrooms. I don't want to go this way. Cause there was a mausoleum. I wanted to go check that out. I guess. I spoke with Diana and she'll let you go on the next ship willing to take you. Wait, for real? How? I, I thought I was going to have to escape on my own somehow, but if she's given me her blessing, that's even better. Uh, I made a compelling case and she agreed. Uh, yeah, if I'm being that. honest, I should have known you can do it. After all, you're the reason we're still out here. I heard about what you did for us, getting that grab drive or whatever. I was kind of hoping you'd overhear me and offer to help earlier. I probably should have just asked you, but I guess I'm not good at asking for help. Anyway, thanks for helping me. I know you didn't need to. No problem. I wish you good luck wherever you find yourself. I really didn't need to help, especially since you can't pay, but whatever. What are you going to do next? What about your sister? Your sister? Julia. Oh, she'll be fine. She loves this stupid ship. I've tried talking her into coming with me, but she won't budge. Like almost everyone else, she believes in the original mission. Whatever. I'm sure I'll hear news of the Constance whereabouts. Maybe I'll even come back to visit. She's my sister, after all. So what are you going to do now? No idea. One of the techs who helped retrofit the grav drive onto the Constant mentioned a place called New Atlantis. Maybe I'll check it out. It sounded interesting. Anyway, seems like a good place to start, especially if I want to find a job that isn't farming. Okay, I wish you good luck. Thanks again. I'm going to need it. It's a whole new world out there. Yeah, I, I mean, you're someday. stepping out with absolutely nothing. Oh, she's giving me a piggy bank and a baseball and a duck. Well, that's not going to get you far in New Atlantis. Do you have money? Are you going to go with me? I ever have to see one more potato. I'm going to... So what now? Now that I'm free to go, I guess I'll try to hitch a ride on the next passing ship we meet. I still have some final preparations to make anyway. Well, I can't I'm take you with to me. Get to New Atlantis. I'll have to find work because can't I, add her to my crew. I need to earn money to afford food, supplies, and some place to live. I'm not sure quite what to expect, but I've seen and heard enough about life on Earth that I have an idea. I'm sure it won't be too bad. Okay. See you, I guess. That's weird. 
I thought I was going to be taking her with me. Or adding her as a crew member. But I guess not. Okay. So we still have location of the ECS constant. We still have speak with Abe. These seem to be glitched. Let's go visit our room. Let's get the heck out of here and just go to Paradiso. Oh, right. I wanted to visit the mausoleum before I left. Alright. Where was that medical center? Medical bay. Follow the signs. Medical bay. Medical bay. Can I go see the mausoleum? Oh gosh. It's like the Hall of the Dead in Skyrim. Mausoleum Records. You think they would just jettison them out into space? Because, you know, 200 years of several generations of people they're talking about not having enough room for everyone and having to kill people to make room why not get rid of all these bodies you can squeeze a few families in here Or, you know, at least uh, cremate people so they weren't taking up as much room. This seems really inefficient. These are exciting times, aren't they? Oh, geez. They got somebody right here to bury. Okay. What's back here? Did she have a name? No, she's just a colonist. That looks kind of weird. Whatever that is. Alright. I guess that was the mausoleum. Alright, now I'm ready to get the heck out of here. Do not fast travel from this location. All right. I'm worried about Janet. I wonder if someone. Yeah, I already helped Janet. Wow. I've Janet's heard about good. Her. All right. Let's get the heck out of here. There's that coil of zero wire still sitting there. Let's undock. Alright, now... Can I go down to Paradiso? pretty. Looks like an everlasting gobstopper. When you've sucked out <laughs> half of the colors on one side, you can see all the layers. Oh! Bish bosh bosh. Actually, I'll leave that equipped, just in case. Alright. 
let's go look at our room. I rented it for seven nights, and I think I've slept in the bed two or three times. So maybe I've got to sleep there seven nights in a row, and then I'll get that quest off of my list. Your safety is our number one priority. I was worried about my beach body until I spoke with that lady at their head. I'm just glad I don't work on the luxury cruisers that bring him here. I mean, how fancy can this place really be? The only restaurant I've got is a Chonks. Ugh. It's my pleasure to make sure our guests are happy. Oh, can't need something. Mm-hmm. That is what we... Are you selling swimsuits yet? No. Just resort wear. Have fun out there. Dave's saying you can steal swimsuits. Yeah, I know. I actually have stolen swimsuits already. I don't know where I put the stolen swimsuits, though. This is unlocked elsewhere. What? Oh, now suddenly I don't have the room anymore. <laughs> That's weird. I mean, I was kind of surprised that my time hadn't run out because I'd rented it for seven days and I slept in the bed just for two or three days and then we left to go do other things and it never, you know, ticked down to, you know, okay, now your days are run out. But once we got here, now I guess it's gone? Okay. Alright, well so much for that then. No paradise vacation for us, Zeke. Let's go up to the rooftop terrace. Oh, there is that- I think there's a restaurant up there. Or a bar or something up here. So there is that. It's lovely here. Yeah, there's a bar. Everything there here is a little more expensive. Than I oh, this is even better than in the brochure. Some of our kids get another nice day in Paradiso. Mm -hmm. They're all nice days, I guess. Come here for a little hour. What did I think huh? three days was going to? Oh, there's some ping pong tables. I don't think I saw these before. I saw one like yesterday and I was like, that's the first time I've seen a ping pong table. All right, let's play some ping pong, Zeke. I bet if we touch them though, everybody will go crazy because it's considered stealing. Like we couldn't pick up a beach ball on the beach and do anything with it. So... So much for that. All right. I guess that's going to be it for me today. Where's the rent? Dave's asking. I'm not sure. What do you what do you mean? Did you mean was that a typo? <laughs> Alright, I've been streaming for quite a while. I got an early start, but I've gone for four hours and I think that's all I'm gonna do. <laughs> That's more than enough for now. Oh, Zeke's sitting over there having a seat. <laughs> He's looking at me like he always does.
Well, I don't know what you meant to say, Dave. Where's the rent? I don't know what that means. So, I was waiting to see if you would follow up with another comment, but... I'm gonna have to head out of here. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Appreciate all you keeping me company. It was good to see some new faces and some of the returning faces. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be playing this game. I've, I, I don't know. I've just been running around doing odds and ends, bits and pieces. Strange little quests here and there, trying to follow up on things. A lot of stuff seems to be broken that I've got on my list, so I can't finish it up. Eh, you know. I'll probably keep playing this until I'm just tired of playing this and I feel like I'm done. Not sure when that will happen. Because it's a good kick back and relax kind of game. I don't know if I feel like starting any new games <laughs> anytime soon and having to learn a whole new system and all new stuff but I don't know we'll see we'll see I do sometimes play some small short and sweet indie games from time to time and I put videos over on my YouTube channel from those I don't live stream them usually but I do play a lot of smaller indie games, and I've got quite a list of indie games that I want to try out. And I want to play Baldur's Gate 3 at some point. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But for now, I will probably be back tomorrow to do a little more Starfield. And I hope you come back and hang out with me. Take care of yourselves. Until next time.